and also how, of course, uh, his life uh, in the village uh, is quite uh, occidentalized, like a Western person uh, standing mm -hmm. from his house. And, uh, and also in the interviews, uh, yes, I have this kind of, this kind of mentality that is possible uh, to understand well from, uh, from his speech, from his uh, talks. Напрежението дали в момент да се фокусирате и на повеќе на културолошките анализи или компарации, господинот одговори дека не баш, меѓутоа дека ни се приказната на Иса, затоа што действото се базира само на животот на на Иса, се може да се види неговата посветеност и кон Западот и кон кон Африка, затоа што кога оди во Африка се однесува како африканец, а кога живе во, во Кинска се однесува како да се локалец. И дека во текот на, на одење напред-назад почнал да се побунува и повеќе да ги критикува афричките начини на функционирање и како тоа ги спречува Африка да, да порасне и да се развива. Yes, uh, I'm interested, for example, in you as a filmmaker, because uh, you're an anthropologist and ethnologist also, and what is for me interesting is that do you have any ethnic boundaries during uh, filming the film? I mean, it was allowed ethics. for you. Uh, it was ethics. Ethics, ethics yes. yes. What is the ethics of your yes. film? So you was allowed to think everything? Or you have maybe something, uh, uh, something as um, um, self censorships, or they they were something uh, not being allowed to film it or so on. Okay. Uh, yes. When I was in the village, for example, I always asked the permissions to the people uh, to record their lives. So people were really and of course uh, uh, kind of, and they agreed uh, to be recorded uh, also because uh, um, I was a friend, a guest of this uh, that uh, in that days uh, it was very important to be able to this uh, anyway, I was recording just uh, ordinary everyday lives uh, and so uh, um, everyday situation that was not difficult to record but not something so private but uh, about this question for me I would like to talk at one moment about my other is a film that I recorded uh, in the hotel uh, about the refugees that were waiting for the result from the um, commission for their application of political asylum. And this was a, a moment in which uh, I had to follow uh, my ethic of filmmaker. Why? Because, uh, okay, uh, the migrants and the refugees are uh, a population that passed in 2015 around 2015, very uh, important period for all the media, newspapers, television, and uh, it was possible to see, to find, uh, to meet many times uh, journalists that went in the hotel and in a very aggressive way, they tried uh, to get some uh, pieces of stories or a glimpse of their lives uh, in this period or uh, um, something from them because it was uh, the topic of the moment, okay? And uh, of course, more, more pain, uh, they expressed uh, and better was for the television, I saw this. But I didn't want to work in this way. I recorded only what I was allowed to record, and above all, in the moment of desperation, inside the shelter, because the very moment of desperation, above all, when they get a negative answer from the commission, I never ever take my camera and I record them. Even if from a dramatic point of view of a film, can be maybe uh, something uh, uh, strong in the film, uh, the dramatization of the life. Uh, but uh, from an ethical point of view, I didn't want to record something like that. Uh, and so in this moment, uh, I stopped to record uh, this, this situation. And uh, also in the moments, uh, mm, again, uh, this is connected to the topic of this my second film. When the refugees were in the, set, in the shelter, uh, waiting for uh, one year for the, the results, the answer from the commission, they were just waiting, and at home, people at home, the families, as I explained today, were waiting money and results and some economical um, benefit from, uh, from, from this journey of their, their relatives, the, the person that migrated. And so the pressures on, uh, on the people that were waiting from home, that were waiting for the documents, 
very, very strong, very, very strong. And sometimes I, in three cases, I, I saw people that were crushed from this pressure and uh, they had panic attacks and they needed uh, to be treated with uh, psychopharmacy medicine for uh, anxiety. anxiety. Yes. Uh, actually, it's a boy too, my friend too, because in that period uh, his family was persecuted by the military of the regime of that period because they were looking for him. And so they went home, they tried to, to scare his family, his family ran away. And uh, uh, he was in Italy, it was uh, important, important. Mm -hmm. without power to have his family at home. And in this moment, he uh, was very desperate, he cried, and uh, one day he was uh, in the bed, he couldn't move, his uh, feet were closed for the stress and anxiety, and uh, they, they brought him to the hospital. And from that moment, he started the therapy. And all this situation was not recorded, and he didn't even try to record it because it was unethical from my point of view. And, um, and about this film, as I said, project, I did face some dramatic situation. The most dramatic point was the record of the, of the calls by phone with yeah. Issa, but we talked about it, it and he agreed. He told me you can record what you want, it is fine to me. And uh, this is the way in which uh, I work. И тоа одговара дека никогаш не не снима без претходно да добие дозвола, дури и да се случи во ситуација кој што има нека се поинаме развито на дејство, ако биде дека има малку драма или не не етички дозволено да снима, престану да да снима. Иако вели дека имало доста моменти кои што се исто важни да се да се знаат, и јас сметам дека треба да се знаат. Во кој што може да ја увиди, да го увиди притисокот врз главниот лик, во моментите кога семејството очекува некаков денати кон нив, а тој се още ги чека документите и не се знае неговата судбина, изборуваше дека на неколку наврати тук му Иса имало панични напади и се случило со сериозни ментални нарушувања. Дури еден ден бележал неподвижен до кревет, со стигнати тупаници и мора да го хоспитализира за да, за да му помогнат. И од тој момент понатамно земал терапија. Но ова никој не го знае. I, I think it's unethical from our side, apart from the filmmaking, uh, to not know this. <laughs> What you shared. I mean, we only know this, but uh, people probably don't. And thank you. Се надевам дека ви беше интересно, дека видеото е еден начин, че на истина студиозен начин како се пристапува кон обработка на една тема, од повреќе аспекти, и на крајот се спомна и моралната димензија. Иако, не знам, може би, ке биде добри на некој, по, на некој начин да се покажи тоа како все тоа тоа вие до психата на човек. Мислам, може би не, не е така а, брутално да се покаже, ама да се да, да се дошли, зашто тоа е резултатот на се до тоа, што го преживуваат другето, кои мигрираат и какви притисуси. Значи, резултатот на притисоците, Е, оно што се случило со главниот на, на филмот. Меѓу тоа да, мора да имаме и нали, граници, се, се, секоја зависи од тоа, од, од, од а, личните ставови. Може да ги сега да го прикажам. Добро, добро дадам. Из Милија Плодин, како ја вене на дет, кога ја вене да портрет. And uh, that uh, it was good that we opened the subject of morality and ethics, uh, since it's actually a key takeaway from from what we should learn from from this movie. And uh, he finds it very fascinating. I think everybody here finds it fascinating. Yeah. Thank you, Mario, once again.
Сега почуваме со официалната програма. Първият филм е... Како си беше филм? Да, тоа е на нашата колешка, Ванеса, од Јужна Африка. Таа, исто како и Марија, пред три години беше тука. Покажуваше визиниот филм за за масаите, а сега ќе видиме еден наистина сосема друг филм кој што покажува како е полово може да навлезе во едно семејство и да ги покаже близките меѓу односи меѓу семејството. Дис ми визима South African director uh, and uh, it's it's portraying how an ethnologist or an anthropologist can uh, enter a family and portray all their uh, connections and relationships within the family. <laughs> Straight on the other, on the second film.
сегодня.
Any comments about this film? About the Beatles? Maybe Mauro? Yeah. What do you want? It's his last film. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, it's not uh, it's a film from the point of view of the artist. Of yes. And I think that in the start of the film, uh, and you didn't understand very well, it is why a, a, a group of artists, the association, had this uh, fun house uh, or when process of a uh, time uh, seekers process uh, because actually there is uh, institutions uh, in Spain, in Spain like in Italy, to provide uh, housing for, uh, for the, the time seekers and uh, in the first part of the documentary there is a uh, station of volunteers to uh, replace uh, the institutional system, uh, institutional process and this I don't understand uh, why Why what? So the reason why in the, uh, the start of the film was explained how the, how the associations of volunteers and the migrants that arrived to Spain to find houses and a place where to stay, where it is uh, the, the local institutions that should provide uh, so the institutional summits, these kind of things, house assistance and all. Yeah. So it is not clear to me why, why? exactly. Because uh, the system is the same in Italy, like in Spain, like in other European countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyone from Spain is that can. <laughs> what, the, what, the question is why they are replacing? Yes, because they said that uh, refugees uh, are arriving uh, in Spain mm -hmm. and uh, they don't have a house or a place where to stay. Mm -hmm. But these are, uh, from what you know, it is not uh, correct because when you are in Spain, uh, and you apply for a political asylum, you, have, you enter in a system like in Italy, where they give you house, they provide food, shelter for you, and assistance until the moment in which you face the commission. And so, this is a doubt that I have why in that film they said that migrants arrive, arrive in Spain and they didn't have a place where to stay. But they were more, more talking about the people that don't go through that system and fall aside. That yeah. system, but, uh, they don't have support, so they, it's not like replacing the system that is, but filling the gaps of the current system. You think that for the migrants that are arrived in Spain but didn't apply for political asylum? Apply for but denied or... Uh, I think that, that was in the first part of the film where they explained that they were helping the people that didn't go into that system. Yeah, and the question is why they didn't go in that system. Eh? Yeah. Mm. But why they didn't go in that system? Mm. I think that many of the migrants uh, don't have information about it. They're not really been told how to do it. They're just getting in and then they're trying to survive and to find a way how to how to exist over there. I mean, mostly it's in that case I haven't been here from the beginning of the conversation, but last I can hear it. We should. Yeah. Uh, so do you know the director? Because is it a really uh, a technologist or? No, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or an activist or... We are an activist, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. So, it's important know. to know that, because that not could really be a, an ethnological film for me. What? Sorry? It's not an ethnological I don't know which is his point of view. As an activist, maybe...
Thank you.